Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, starting with the 144,000 men of Israel, which consists of the servants, the prophets, whom have been ordained since the foundations of this earth to sing this new song, which comes in the form of this gospel, which would be preached throughout all four corners of this earth and rest upon the heirs of the innumerable multitude, men, women, and children of Israel, which may be scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a brief lesson prophesying of the downfall of Esau Edom, the so-called white man, starting with the chief house of Esau, which would be Amalek, okay, the Amalekites, which are the small hats, which come in the form of these international banking families, man, okay, from the Rothschilds, the, the Gettys, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, right, the Batten Courts, so on and so forth, man, okay, we're living in the time of their final moments, man, but being, as far as them being in the position of power, okay, and as much as they think that they're in control of this transition, Okay, from uh, governing uh, the world from uh, the, the the Western Hemisphere, and they think that, that they think they're going to take it to the East. Okay, as far as China is concerned, but that's a, a vain hope. Okay, because ultimately we understand that their minds are being controlled by Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, pursuing to Proverbs twenty one and one, the heart of the king. Okay, is in the hand of the Lord, man. You see, he's controlling this man. You see, he's making him make the moves he's making, the decisions he's taking, okay? The efforts and uh, uh, counsels that they're having and efforts to fulfill uh, this fourth industrial revolution, okay? The, the diabolical plans, okay, that they have formatted to, to come into execution in the form of this, uh, this karagma, for instance, Okay, which is that device, the size of a grain of rice, pursuant to Revelations 13 and 16. Okay, the mark of the beast, which is going to be used to govern you in every way, shape, and form and fashion. Okay, it's the <laughs> it's going to be predicated on the on the on the on the new monetary system, which is going to be a digital one, man. Okay, they're also going to be able to track your carbon footprint with this device, your whereabouts. Okay, your uh. Your vital signs, okay, are going to be able to be monitored. You see. So this is the this is this is just a, a a part of the diabolical plan that this man has. Not to mention the fifteen minute cities, okay. He's he's planning on stuffing you people in. Okay, where you're going to own nothing and be happy. You see, but contrary to popular belief. Okay, this this couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth. Now, grant that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai may allow him, okay, to uh, just barely bring this thing into uh, into hindsight. But ultimately, as it says in Job, uh, <laughs> the Lord is gonna uh, rain, okay, the missiles upon him while he's eating, man. And he will not feel quietness in his belly, right, and the fullness of his sufficiency. Right? He shall be in straits, man. So he's not, it's his, his NWO was not going to come into perfection. Okay? His, his idea of having this everlasting uh, grip on the planet through a, a, a technocracy, you see? This, this synthetic immortality in the form of uh, transhumanism. It's far fetched, man. Because as we know, if we go back in time, let's go here. Let's go to the book of Genesis. When he was given the blessing, okay, by Isaac, okay, which was <clears throat> Yahweh Shai, if you can receive it, okay, this is, um, this is post him being yikwabbed, okay, by, by Jacob, 
okay, for the birthright. Okay, yeah, he, re he received the blessing, but he didn't receive the blessing of the firstborn. Even though he was the firstborn, he sold his birthright. See, for some raw meat, man. <laughs> and this is what this thing's all about. This is why he's doing the things he's doing now. Okay, this is why he's trying to eradicate the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Which is, which is going to be to no prevail. Okay, it's going to be to no prevail, man. Why? Because Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai promised, okay, that the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay, will have an everlasting salvation. You see? A world without end. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is a man of his word, man. Let's go here. And there's no coincidence we see Esau, you know, handle the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans roughly, man. Okay? Which there's a, a track record of the atrocities that Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, has done to the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. It's, it's well documented in history, man. You see, so this can't be... Um, Contest it, you know, as far as the uh, <laughs> violence, okay, that was suffered, um, you know, by this man, you know, a so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans had to suffer by the by the hands of this man, man, which 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 was of course of the will of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, you know, he gave us it up into the hands of the robber, you know, for our transgressions. You see, but ultimately, for every action. There's a reaction. <laughs> you see? So what Esau has done, there's a reaction for that. And that's vengeance and judgment and recompense, man. You see? Proving that that sword he was blessed with was actually a curse. Let's get this. This is the book of uh, Genesis chapter 27 and verse 38. And it reads, And Esau said unto his father, and again, this is, this is post, okay? Him being yikwabbed. Okay? Now, mind you, the, the birthright was always uh, meant for Jacob. It was just an effort to play out the Howard Bashim Yahushua's movie that it played out this way. You see? But it, it, he, it, Jacob was always going to have the birthright no matter what. You see? It was always meant for Jacob to have the birthright. You see? The world was created for our sakes. You see that? Let's get this. The book of Genesis chapter 27 and verse 38 and it reads... And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Okay. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Okay. And of the dew of heaven from above. You see, Job 9 and 24, the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked, man. See, this is why this man has control over the planet. This is why he has control uh, of the resources. You see, this is why he heaped up all the precious stones in the form of gold and silver, platinum, uranium, okay? Gases and oils, man. Okay, and speaking of oil, when you go into this word fatness, that's the spirit, right? Let's go here real quick. The book of Genesis, chapter 27. Let's jump down. Let's get this word real quick. Make sure I'm in the LC. I'm in a different version here. Let's go with KJV. Boom. For edification. Let's get this word, fatness. Strong's H, 4924. Mishman. Mishman. Right. Second entry. Shemanim. Shemanim. Right. And it goes into what? Fatness, fat piece. Right. Fertile place. 
like richly prepared food, uh, fatness. We want our, our definition B. Look at oil. You see that? Olive oil, oil. So it's no coincidence why this man has control over the oil. Okay? Why this man's able to turn a vessel around, okay, that's headed to Europe and say, no, send that back to Babylon. This happened. Okay, a couple of years ago, man. Why do you think why do you think that is? You see, because they're living out their blessing right now. This is why Esau Edom, the so-called white man, in the form of these Amalekites, these international banking families, have this level of authority. It's because it's been given to them from on high. You see? And we're going to show you that. You see that? Continuing on in uh, Genesis 27 and verse 40, and it reads, and let's fit, uh, as a matter of fact, let's speak on this a little bit more. And they have what? They have the fatness of the earth, right? And the dew of heaven. From above, see that? This man controls the airspace. You see? <laughs> it wasn't a coincidence why back in 1969, he claimed the title of being the first to hit the moon, which is a lie. Okay, they were in Hollywood somewhere, uh, a block away from McDonald's. Okay, and, and Studio 666, man. Okay? When they when they when they when they uh brought forth that that <laughs> that, that that falsifies uh video man with this nigga Neil Armstrong talking about he on the moon you see this nigga can't get past the Van Allen belt man the radiation belt see he's been he's been uh bounded. See, he's been given a, he's been given a blessing, but his blessings came with his blessings came with a bound. And it also tells you that in Job, the number of his days are with the Lord. He set bounds on this nigga. You see, he saw he's not gonna be able to get past that Van Allen belt, man. And start setting up shop on Mars and on the moon and I don't know. The Lord's not gonna allow that. Eh? <laughs> the Lord's not gonna allow that. Now, you got to think, if they've been on the moon already uh, in, is it, what, 1969? Come on, man. Over 50 years ago? So if they had already been on the moon, you got to think. They would already have been back up there. There would be a Starbucks on the moon, okay? You would be able to take vacations to the moon if this nigga had been on the moon already. Think about that. Come on, man. Esau's not fooling nobody. This nigga never made it there. Okay, anyways, let's continue on. Genesis uh, 27 and 40, and it reads, And by thy sword shalt thou live. You see, and the sword is any killing instrument. It's the modern day sword, it's the gun. Okay, and the sword in its perfection are those ICBM missiles, man. The weapons of the Lord's indignation. You see, and scripture says that this man's going to fall on his own sword. Proving that it was a curse back. What's that? Isaiah 37 tells us that. You see? And shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. That thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Okay? And this nigga came out the pit. All right? Back in the late 1300s. All right, early 1400s. And manifested in the form of the Renaissance period. Okay? Where this man rewrote history. Okay, well, he went. He went to cut, uh, knocking nose off of statues and painting over images. Okay, crucified the Lord. As you see, they have erected a seizure, a seizure Borgia, a Serapis, Serapis crystals. You see, but the beautiful thing about it, pursuing the revelations, at, uh, the twentieth chapter tells us that he will be let loose for only a little season. This was not meant to be prolonged. He only received the blessing without the birthright. Meaning what? <laughs> There's a set time where he's going to be removed. And we're coming into that time. All the tokens are there. Which are signs. 
okay? That he's about to come face to face with his demise, man. Mm-hmm. And the phone chimed in. This is why scripture says, um, uh, lift up, lift up, not the horn, man. Lift not up the horn. I believe that Psalms, let's go there. Psalm 75. Con in verse 4, we'll probably end up reading down on this. And it reads, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and Esau is a fool. Okay? We know he doesn't believe in the Most High. And he doesn't fear him. And how do we know this? By his behavior, man. His adverse behavior and mindset towards the Lord. There's how we know he doesn't believe in him, nor fear him. Okay, he's that fool. And uh, what's that? Psalm 53. Let's jump here real quick. The book of Psalms chapter 53 and verse 1. And it reads, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no power. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good, man. And look at Esau's track record. He's been at war the whole time. He, the whole time he's been in power, he's been at war. It tells you in First Maccabees. Okay. Um, upon Antiochus, Antiochus Epiphany. Uh, I'm sorry. Not, yeah, upon yeah, upon Antiochus Epiphany, manifesting on the scene. Okay, you had the four generals of Alexander the Greek. Okay, these are Edomites, man. Okay, when they when they came into uh, <laughs> when they came into their power. Okay. It tells you that evils increased on the earth. That's no coincidence, man. You see, because he's that red horse spoken of in Revelation 6. This nigga was built. Okay, he's wired and genetically uh produced to take peace from the earth. This is what this man does. This is how he's been wired. Okay? And the Lord lifted him up just so he can show his power in these days to come. Just like what he did to Pharaoh. Let's go back. Because Esau, you will be humbled. That's a guarantee. There's no doubt about it. Back in the book of Psalms, chapter 75, and verse 4 again, it reads, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly. And to the wicked, and we know the wicked is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, pursuant to Malachi 1 and 4, right? And to the wicked, lift not up the horn. Okay, and the horn represents power. Okay, take a rhino, take a rhino, for instance. Okay, that rhino's horn. Okay, hey, that's his power source. Yeah, he can he can mow you down. You know, he can mow you down if he was hornless, but hey. That, with that horse, with that horn in play, though, with a flick, with a flick of the neck. OK, that's your ass, man. You see, that's where his power lies. OK, the Lord saying to the wicked, what? And to the foolish, lift not up the horn, man. The power that you've received, don't get puffed up and proud, man. Let's get a little bit more. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. Right. Don't get proud. The power you've received is of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the phone chimed in. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what these heathen have done, starting with Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Okay? They become proud. They've, li they've lifted up the head. And it tells you that in Psalms, the 83rd chapter. Let's go get that real quick. When you go to Psalms, the 83rd chapter... Let's read from the top. It reads, Keep not thou silence, O power. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O Yahweh Bashim Yashai. We need you to work, Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Keep not silence. Why? For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, which is a loud noise, right? And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They become proud. You see? They've lifted up their head. What have they done? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, right? The Israelites. 
and consult it against thy hidden ones of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. The ones that were never thought of to wear the crown. Okay, but that's going to be quite a surprise to you inhabitants of the earth, you 17 heathen nations, when you come to find out, okay, that the Lord's beloved, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai's beloved people, the people whom he cherishes are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. You're going to find that out. And there are speckled birds. We always got to qualify it and throw that out there because we've been scattered pursuing the Deuteronomy 28 and 64. So there is going to be Israelites that look like the other nations. Okay? But their bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's go back. The book of Psalms chapter 75. In verse 5 again. Lift up not your horn on high. Right? Speak not with a stiff neck. Why? For promotion cometh from Salakia. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. Right? But Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Is the judge, man. And notice how it didn't mention the north. Because the, 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 the authority, the power, okay, comes from on high. <laughs> you see? It tells you that. It tells you that in Daniel, man. The Lord said the Lord is in full control. Matter of fact, let's go get that in Daniel, the second chapter. And there's another, there's another great uh, scripture in Wisdom of Solomon 6, which I think I'm going to get that too. The book of Daniel chapter 2, just to prove that point. In verse 21, and it reads, And he changeth the times and the seasons. Who? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Esau, even the so-called white man, has no control over these seasons coming and going. Okay, he must have, he, uh, he may have various devices like the heart machine and you know, these other uh, devices that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai allow him to create and efforts for him to manipulate the weather. Okay, but this man has no control over the time or seasons that come forth and leave off. And he has no control over the winter coming, spring, summer, fall. You see? Winter, summer. Winter, spring, summer, fall. He has no control over that process. No control at all. See? He removeth kings. See that? And setteth up kings. You see, let's go get that wisdom of Solomon real quick. You see, because when you're a king, you have what? Sovereignty. Let's go get this real quick. We're going to come back. So lucky I'm up to show and turn this off. Here we go. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 1, verse 3 is the point, and it reads, Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand, learn ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. And right now, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, has that global power. We read it in Genesis 27. He's been given the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. Okay, he's the first of the nations. To have the first of, I'm sorry, the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. And, and the chief house Amalek, okay, is the one in that stead, first and foremost. Okay, which he was supposed to trickle down that blessing to the rest of the regular Joe six-pack Edomites, but he did not. Because they're covetous, they're rapacious, okay, and there's no honor amongst thieves. You see? Continuing on. Give air, ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations. And again, this is the stead, okay, that these Edomites are in in the form of these Amalekites, man. These small hats, these international banking families. Here's the point. For power is given you of the Lord, man. And this is what Esau forgot. Esau just slipped his mind. 
Okay. This man believes in a critical race theory. He, he really thinks, okay, that he's that supreme race. Just by, it just, it just happened by chance. Okay, they, they, they flipped the coin. They called heads and landed on heads and now they them niggas, man. And that's just the way it happened. Nah, man. You've been given, okay, the ranking that you have over the other nations. You've been given this position of power. By Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And, it's, and guess what? That same power is going to remove the scepter and the staff from your hands. You see? Because you were never meant to rule forever pursuing the biblical prophecy. And we can see clearly now that your end is at hand. Prophecy is speaking. As much as you think that you're conjuring up these thoughts... Okay, and manipulating the situation. You think you're the reason why you're going to take the grid down and you're, you're, you're moving in these uh, immigrants or migrants or whatever and you're going to create this chaos or, and bring order and, and come out of the dust like the phoenix bird. You're going to go start uh, pushing uh, your, 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 uh, your, uh, your authority out of China. And you, nah, man, you're not. This is not of your thoughts. This is prophecy that these things will play out the way they are, man. And that's the beautiful thing about understanding prophecy and having the Holy Spirit on you, man. Because we know exactly what's happening and why. And it's without a doubt, okay, <laughs> that you're about to come into your demise, man. It's without a doubt. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it, the followers. Let's continue on. The power is given you of the Lord, man. You see that? And when you go into Colossians, what you're going to find out, it's, it's Yahweh Shai. Through the authority of Yahweh that gave you the power and the sovereignty, man. You see? And sovereignty from the highest. See that? <laughs> see? So Yahweh Shai through Yahweh, man. Because again, we know Yahweh gave Yahweh Shai what? Power over all heaven and all earth, man. See, who shall try your work? See, you're going to be tried. Your works are going to be tried. Everything you've done, how you've ruled the people, how you've dealt treacherously with our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans throughout all these courses of history. Right? And search out your counsels, man. See that? So there's no escape. Okay, there's no escape. Judgment's going to come upon you, man. There's no doubt about it. Let's go back to that Psalm 75. Oops, Salakia. I think there's a little more I wanted there. Oh, you know what? As a matter of fact, I was in um I was in Daniel. I was in Daniel the second chapter. Back in Daniel the second chapter in the 21st verse, Khan. Let's read this again from the top. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. See that? And we just proved it. Right? He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. You see that? <laughs> and guess what? He that giveth can taketh away. And all the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you once had. Okay? Able to, able to run circles. Around the people who you like to call Goyim, right? You're now not able to deceive the people. Okay, that's why uh, uh, questions are raised in Jeremiah the 49th chapter regarding your wisdom. Let's go get that real quick. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, and verse 7, and it reads concerning Edom. You see that? You so called white people. Starting with Amalek, the chief house. Starting with you small hats, man. You international banking families, man. Concerning Edom, man. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts. Is wisdom no more in teeming? Okay, in teeming on them Germans, man. Okay, is counsel perished from the prudent? These are questions being asked, man. Because you're looking real sloppy right about now, man. With your whole C19er. Okay, your whole new variant, 
<laughs> okay? Your whole Wuhan ness. Hey, you looking real sloppy. Okay, everything that's going on over there in the, the so-called Middle East. Okay, the illusion that you're able to move with, the, 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 the deflection. You see, it ain't looking sharp. It's looking real sloppy, right? Is there wisdom banished, man? <laughs> see, this is Yahweh Bashim Shai being facetious, man. You see, because the beginning stages of a nation that's losing their grip, okay, is they, they, lose, they lose the ability to make wise decisions, man. And ultimately, their subjects turn on them. Okay? That's why when you go back into the book of Job, it tells you what? All, every hand of the wicked <laughs> shall come upon him. And that word wicked goes into the laborers, man. And we're seeing that now. You see, none of these Babylonians want to go to war for this place. You see, because of how they've been treated, mishandled, misled, deceived, lied to, uh, uh, poisoned. You see that? <laughs> hey, we there. We at the end of evil. E Akiyam and Akwaf. And we're about to come into glory in our kingdom. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai's kingdom. Okay? Israel's kingdom is going to stand forever. Let's close out the book of Daniel. Why? Because we have the birthright. That's why. It's all about the birthright. This is what this man's striving so hard to get back. It's not going to happen though. You're not going to steal the birthright back. It's over. The book of Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. And it reads. And in the days of these kings. What kings? All these heathen kings that stood and fell man. Okay. The Assyrian Babylonian. The Medio Persians. Right. The Greeks. <laughs> right. The, the, the Romans. Now this revived Roman Empire. Okay. That have come and gone. And this is the same thing that's going to happen with this one. It's come. It's re it, it, it reached its perfection. Now it's diminishing. And ultimately it's going to go. It's going to go out with a bang though. Pursuant to prophecy man. It's going to go out with a bang man. Because all the blood that's on this land. Must be accounted for man. It must be disquieted. And as it tells us in Revelations 18. Thus with violence man. Should this great city be thrown down man. Mm -hmm. It's written. And the phone chimed in. Okay, the book of Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44 and it reads And in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom Which shall never be destroyed What kingdom is this? The kingdom of Israel Okay, which is going to sit on the shoulders of our power Yahweh Shai Let's jump real quick and prove that And we'll come back and close out Look, I gotta get this The book of Isaiah chapter 6 I'm sorry. The book of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. And it reads, For unto us, uh, unto who? A so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man, Israel. Okay? For unto us a child is born. Who? Yahweh Shai. Unto us a son is given. Proving that Yahweh Shai didn't come for all these other nations, man. This right here, this precept alone, man. If you if you if you harness any level of uh, of spiritual faculties, man, and understanding of the scriptures, you can clearly see that. Let's read this from the top. For unto us, that's a possessive pronoun. A child is born. Unto us, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Check this out of the increase of his government. OK, and peace. There shall be no end. And real quick, when you go into this word government, OK, when you go into the word world in the Greek it's cosmos. OK, and that's what it's going into a government, a, a, harmon a harmonious arrangement. OK, when you read um, John 3 and 16, OK, that these diehard. Bugged out, 
vocab Malone Christians try to hold on to and try to use to try to uh, uh, find a way to to, mm-hmm. to force mm-hmm. their way, okay, <laughs> into our into our covenants, man. No, man. That word world in the Greek is cosmos, which goes into harmonious arrangement. It goes into government. The government of Israel, man. Let's continue on. Go read Isaiah 45 and 17. All right, if you don't believe me, right? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. See? So this is the everlasting kingdom that's coming in. The one that's going to stand forever. Let's continue on. Upon the throne of David, okay? And upon his kingdom to order it, chronological order. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, King David, okay? The 12 and the 144,000 men, that's the governing body. That's the regime of the eon to come right there. And then you're going to have the innumerable multitude. The rest of the one third, Okay? <laughs> that are going to be present that first thousand years of you heathens being beat maliciously, man, by rods of iron, man. Hey, it's written. Don't get mad at me. I'm just a messenger, man. Go read. Go read Revelations, the second chapter, man. Okay? Read Isaiah, the second chapter. Go, go read, man. It's written. See? Let's continue on. To order it and to establish it with judgment. See? To, let's read it again. To order it and, establish, and to establish it with judgment. Okay? With justice and judgment is the habitation of the Lord's throne. And when you go into that word habitation, it goes into foundation. Our power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is all about justice and judgment. Okay? And this is what this world that we know of today is void of. It's void of judgment. But it's about to receive it on a divine level. Okay? Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is coming to punish this world for their evil, man. As is written in Isaiah 13. Okay? <laughs> that, gl hey, that, gl the, that glittering sword, them glittering swords are about to be shot to and fro, man. It's about to get real in the field, man. It's about to get real. And before he sends them glittering swords, the Lord's going to starve you people out. Okay? The Lord's going to starve you people out. Famine, man. It's written. Famine's coming, man. <laughs> Those that escape the hunger, right? Sure, the sword destroyed. Those of you with them big ass uh, uh, bunkers or hideouts as well. You know what I mean? You're able to escape the famine. You got you got uh, whole lower levels of your house full of food and non-perishables. Hey, hey, you escape the hunger? Guess what? Missiles are coming. See that? Judgment's coming, man. Let's continue on. And with justice from henceforth, even forever. The, who's going to establish this? Who's going to make this happen? The zeal of the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, will perform this. You see that? He signed off on it. He signed off on it. See? It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Let's go back to Daniel 2 and close out. The book of Daniel, chapter 2. And the beautiful thing about it, we can see this developing. We're seeing it. We're seeing, we're seeing this place crash, man. The world is in the world is in <laughs> complete confusion. You know, this thing's happening all over the earth. It's over, man. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, and verse 44 from the top. And the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom. Which shall never be destroyed. Kahala Yam La Yahweh Ba Shim Yahweh Shai. It's 144 where I'm at right now. 441, 441. Kahala Yam La Yahweh Ba Shim Yahweh Shai. Continuing on. And in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. We're not going to be joint heirs with other nations. Okay, like the brother Barack said out of Birmingham, Alabama. It's not going to be a, a, a Jaco Edom rulership. Okay? Nah, man. You niggas are taking the back seat. And you're going to fall underneath our feet. And after that 1,000 year process, 
Sayonara to evil E, as it's written. Let's continue on. And the kingdom shall, shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. There you have it. Okay? So we know and understand no matter what Esau, Edom, the so-called white men in the form of these elites plan, okay, no matter how hard they try to come down and, and, and persecute, okay, the believers, okay, starting with the men of the Lord, prophecies going to be fulfilled. And we understand through much tribulation should we enter into the kingdom, okay? So we know we have to go through the fire. Okay? We're going to have to go through that straight and narrow in efforts to enter the wide, man. But it's a guarantee. The physician is coming to cut off a long disease, man. And he today that is a king, tomorrow shall die. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learnt this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwaf were edified. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kal Halalium La Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Raka Kodash. Shalom.